My name is Alfonso Aguilar Jr. and I was born in a little town in Texas, San Benito, Texas. But I was raised in Illinois. I've been in, living in Aurora, Illinois since I was five years old. So I grew up here in um, Winter Abraham Lincoln School of Mandrigal. I went to Thomas Jefferson. I graduated in 1965 from West Aurora High School. After graduation, I got drafted right away. So by November, I was already in Fort Knox. And I was there in Fort Knox for my basic training. I had appendicitis attack, whatever, so they took my appendix out, so I had to be recycled. So I had to be in Fort Knox a little bit longer. When I completed my basic training, I went to Fort Sill, Oklahoma for my AIT, which they assigned me to artillery. And I was in the 155 Housers, which a uh, Hauser is like a cannon. They spread the trails and you put the projo and the powder and the, you time it, what deflection, what quadrant you want to shoot. So uh, we learned all that. So we got done with that. They uh, shift us over to Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and they prepare us to go to Vietnam. Fort Campbell, Kentucky was the home of the 101st Infantry Division, so we were their backup. And so the time came, and uh, the whole battalion, everybody, left for Vietnam. It was, it was hard. It was hard getting used to uh, the war. And uh, you're just a young kid. I mean, I grew up with five sisters. I was the only boy, so <laughs> I was in a, like a, you know, big hero, like a big, you know, uh, guy. I was just a, I was just a simple kid, you know? So I was afraid. And, uh, but you learn to get over it. You just have to. You don't, you don't, you, you're not gonna survive. So you have to learn, adjust to the way it's gonna be for one year there. Any, anytime you're in a war zone, you're in danger. Uh, Cause I could, I hear people would say, oh, you went to Vietnam? Yeah, what, would you, what did you do? Oh, I was a mechanic. And they said, oh, then you weren't, you know, you were okay. They said, no, you're not okay. You, you can get a mortar. We got mortar all the time. You know, we got sniper fight, you know, uh, sh shot at and stuff like that. So you're in danger no matter where you are. When you're in a war zone, you're in danger day and night. So just because you're, you're a mechanic, you're a clerk or whatever, you know, you could be typing and boom, here comes a mortar right on top of your head, you know. So, yeah, we we're supposed to back up the 100, uh, 101st uh, Airborne Division. So we started going on that, and so... What they did every time they went on a mission, we followed. And they hooked up our housers with a big helicopter called Chinooks. And they had a big old belt and everything. They hooked up the, 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 the hauser and they, they flew us wherever. We were in Da Nang, Modoc, Dao Ying. Uh, we were as, much, as close as we could get to the Demiller Trison. The, the hauser is like, well, you spread the legs like this, and then uh, everybody named their hausers. Like, you know, everybody needs, like, oh, say, like, Tom Cruise, you know, Maverick, the, the, the flight that they, they named their, their airplane's name, and guys named their trucks, and this and that. We would name, and we named our hauser Boot Sinatra. And because at that time, Nancy Sinatra had that song, these boots are made for walking. So anyway, uh, we named him Boot Sinatra, and we all got a picture of Nancy Sinatra. She's in a little bikini. I brought it with me, but I just, I know, but I showed this to the kid. I, <laughs> and she's in a bikini, a pink bikini, and she goes, love, hi, Alfie, because everybody called me Al instead of Alfonso. They, everybody called me Alfie. And so I say, hi, Alfie. Love, Nancy. And I still got that picture but that, that we, because we name our, and then I wonder, how the heck did she know about the Hauser? You know, naming, being named after her, you know? But um, the, 
that, I don't know. That was that was. How'd you hurt your hand? So then the hauser, you open up the breech block, and then you got a projo, which is like this high in a bottom. Projo. That's a round. A round, like like an ordinance, like things that go boom round. Yes, it's okay. like it's like it's like a like a bullet. Okay, but it's. Yeah, a huge, humongous. It weighs 100, and, I think it's 108 or 118 pounds because I could hardly lift that thing. When I, it was, like I said, I only weighed 118 pounds and I was just an 18 year old kid. I could, I could, it would take two guys. One, they hit like a little bed and you put the projo on that and then one guy on that side and the other guy and then we would put it up there to the hauser and then with a pole, they would ram it in. And then, if the 101st Infantry was like far away or they were close and they close, we would be on the charger of the powder. So we had charge one, which is a little bag like this, and then charge two, which is two bags. It went all the way up to charge, or that was just, you want to shoot five miles away. So, and then you had a deflection and quadrant. Only a corporal or a sergeant were allowed to be on the scope. It, it would be you, the, the, on top of the, the, the hauser, you, you would sit, and then it's got a scope. And then he would look on the scope. And whoever the recon man for the 101st would, would call where they're at, then he would adjust where to, where, where to fire to. So then after that, when you push the, the projo, then you put the powder, then you close the breech block. And this was like, oh my goodness, like make two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, half asleep and everything. And I didn't get my hand out of the way. So before I knew it, the guy had closed the breech block and caught my thumb. And I said, whoa, <laughs> just yelling and yelling. What's wrong, what's wrong? And you got my hand in there. So anyway, uh, he opened up the breech block and my finger or my thumb was just like flat, but uh, there's no hospital, there's no medics, there's nothing there, just, uh, you know, they got a little kit, and whatever they get, band-aids or whatever. So anyway, the next day, uh, they gave me some pain pills, and my thumb then was like about four inches, <laughs> and it was black and blue. So what they did, they took a, a paper clip, and they straightened it out, and they got a cigarette lighter, and they heated the paper clip, and they put it real slowly to my fingernail. And then they got, and the, the blood just poured out. You know, it, it, it didn't go into my finger, they just like wax, you know, just uh, made a little bitty hole on my nail, and then the, the blood poured out, and it felt so good. Because <laughs> a lot of the pressure just came out, you know, so. But uh, that's the only time I got injured. Thank God. The weather was very hot, but then the one that was worse was during the monsoon season. During the monsoon season, it rained, it rained, it rained, day and night. Uh, when, we, when we came to camp to build up a new camp, we would uh, dig like a trench high enough so we could put our beds and then we would fill sandbags. Whenever you didn't have nothing to do, you fill sandbags. It was just fill sandbags, fill sandbags and everything. And uh, we would put those like walls and then we would put uh, boards and stuff and then, then we put uh, more sandbags on top in case we got mortar or sniper fire or whatever. So uh, we did that to take care of ourselves. And so uh, sometimes during the monsoon season, the water would just fill the the drenches. We wake up in the morning and the, the, the cot would be full of water. A lot of people didn't think of the Vietnam War as, as, as uh, you know, as a, as a war that, you know, that was supposed to be, we were supposed to be involved in. A lot of people didn't like us. We, you know, they were, we were called names and everything. So you had to deal with that, you know. So uh, you just had to, uh, you know, just take it. I mean, you couldn't be fighting everybody that was calling you names and thinking you of you that you shouldn't have gone and, and all that stuff, you know. You went, you did your part, you came back alive, thank God, and uh, 
I'm thankful for that. I know that it's changed a lot because I noticed that uh, uh, people, they know, they say, oh, yeah, he's a veteran. He's the one. Oh, my God, thank you for your service and stuff like that. And, and before they didn't, they were more like put their nose up in the air or say some kind of remark or something. Oh, a bunch of baby killers or this and that, you know. Uh, uh, you know, stuff like that that we had to hear, but we had to avoid. You know, we've been getting in fights all the time, so you just try to avoid it. But, uh, yeah, things have uh, changed a, a lot, so uh, I'm, 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 I'm grateful for that. The honor flight, it was something that we did not get when we left, and we did not get when we came back. I mean, there was no goodbye, there was no banners, there was nothing when we left. It was just a, a ship full of... Vietnam, uh, 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 U.S. soldiers, or you know, who we weren't in Vietnam yet, so uh, we were just uh, a bunch of kids who we were all 18, 19 years old. And uh, when we got back, there was no welcome back either, nothing. It was just, uh, I guess, uh, a lot of people didn't think of the Vietnam War. As as a, you know, as a as a war for to a need or something like that. They thought it was just a waste uh, uh, of life, waste of money and stuff like that. Which it didn't matter. We had to do what we had to do. I had five sisters. I was the only boy. My dad was the only boy. So he said, no, 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 you're not going to go. He knew I was in the service. He didn't mind being in the service. But when I got orders to go to Vietnam, he says, no, you're not going. I'm the only boy in the family. I'm the only Aguilar. You are the only one in my family. He said, you're not going to go. I said, no, Dad, I am going to go. I am not going to be like the guys burning their draft cars, going to Mexico, going to Canada. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. That's not me. I have a responsibility, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go. You sure? I said, yes, I'm positive. I want to go. He says, okay, well, that's up to you. My mom, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, you're not going. I said, mom, I'm going, mom, so, you know, don't worry. I'll be back. And she says, how do you know? And this and that. I says, because you pray all the time. So <laughs> I know you're going to help me in your prayers, so I'll be back. And uh, so, I, so, so I went. I went because I wanted to do my part, and I'm glad I did. And uh, when I got home, after leaving Midway Airport, I got home, and here's my yard full of, Welcome home, Al. My door is full of letters. And I start reading them, and I said, who the heck is this, you know? So, so anyway, but they were from you, your class, and all that stuff, you know? And I said, oh, my goodness. And then uh, you gave me a call later on, and you said, uh, you know, can you come over and tell me, uh, you know, tell the group, our kids, about the your honor flight and your tour in Vietnam and all that stuff. And I said, yeah, I'd be glad to, you know? Because I don't like to talk about the Vietnam War. But it's being educational, I'll do it. But otherwise, a lot of, lot, lot, I know a lot of soldiers, a lot of veterans. Yeah, oh yeah, well, I did it, I did that. And that's not me, you know? Whatever happened over there, it happened. What happened, happened, you know? I'm just glad. Thank God he brought me back, and uh, I'm back with my family. My girlfriend, when I left, she was still waiting for me. We got married. We had three kids. Now we got eight grandkids, and then I got uh, two great-grandkids. <laughs> so, uh, so life's been good. Everything, you know, that, that the honor flight did, I am so grateful, which I will never, never forget. I am so glad for the honor flight because uh, uh, that was my big thank you for serving because we didn't get that. I'm just not talking about myself. 
I'm talking about the, all the U.S. veterans. I think like 59,000 or something were killed in Vietnam, POWs and stuff like that. So uh, we, we got the, the thank you from the honor flight that we deserve. Thank you so much, honor flight.